We learn every day. A few months ago, I made the mistake of going on my friend's bike without any brakes. And well, it ended up a little something like this. I'd gone downhill, I accelerated, and I did what most people do, slow down and press on the brakes. However, the brakes on this bike didn't feel like working. So I had to choose between two options, either to ride to the bottom of the hill or crash into a bush. Eventually, I crashed into a bush, and the aftermath looked a little something like this. Yeah, not too pleasant. Now, why am I telling you this crazy story? I want you to know that we learn every day. Whether it's learning how the parts of a cell function or a life lesson, such as making sure a bike has brakes the next time you go on it. We learn every day. However, when it comes to learning in school, learning is very different for students. Students are being told what to learn and how to learn. For the majority of students that have other passions outside of school, they're being educated out of their passions. That being said, if students learn in different ways and have different passions, how can schools accompany those differences? Hi, my name is Kalani Adolfo, and I am here today to answer the question, how have schools diminished learning? I have been a student for a while. In fact, I've spent over 11 years in school. I do 180 days or 1,080 hours of school per year. I have been taught in various ways by over 30 teachers, and I've learned a lot. I've forgotten a lot too, but I've learned that schools can improve learning for students. There are multiple ways of learning. In fact, I'd like to mention the three main ones, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Visual learners are those that take in information by seeing the material they're given. One survey reveals that 65% or 13 out of every 20 people are visual learners. Even I consider myself as a visual learner. Next is auditory. Auditory learners tend to absorb information by listening to or repeating information to understand a topic. These, le these learners have enhanced critical thinking skills and a greater probability at correctly reciting information. Lastly is kinesthetic. Kinesthetic learners are hands-on and they learn by collaborating, they learn by touching, feeling, using their five senses to understand information. Every person learns differently, whether it's by visually, auditorily, or kinesthetically learning. But when we look at schools, students are being treated as a blank canvas, and that canvas must depict the same drawing for each and every student. I have done many sports, baseball, jujitsu, rowing, swimming, the list goes on. My parents would encourage my passions and I couldn't thank them enough for their support. By definition, passion is a strong liking or desire for something. This strong liking that we describe as passion is what keeps the drive to learn alive. But schools, they don't incorporate passion, they standardize students. And when students are standardized, it's easier for schools to manage students which leaves passion to foil. Whether it's encouraging passion to the 71% of children that participate in a sport once a year, or the 49% of students that participate in music education, encouraging passion is vital for a progressive future. But this so-called future has remained in the past by an education system that has remained with the same principles needed to make factory workers, which isn't a surprise because students learn in a systematic way. They're controlled by bells, they're lined up in straight rows, they're told to be quiet unless they want to speak, oh, and they're given information to throw away on a test. Input, output, are we human or are we machines? There's one thing I've learned from school, students are being programmed to learn in this way. In fact, the, the word student originates from the Latin word studere, which translates to be eager or enthusiastic to study. For schools, the goal should be to encourage students becoming eager and passionate about their classes. Lastly, schools must innovate and have students collaborate more with each other. 
86% of employees blame lack of collaboration as the top reason for workplace failures, which isn't a surprise because going all the way back to schooling, students are driven by collaboration rather to achieving a grade. We all have a past, but our past does not have to define us. Schools have been doing the same thing the same way for a long time, and schools no longer have to have the title of being quote unquote outdated. As Ms. Conroy, the principal here at Cathedral Catholic advises, we need to always be looking forward, not backwards, forwards, especially when it comes to school. If these changes do not happen, diminished learning and the failure to support the passions of students will continue to persist. If these changes do happen, I believe that students will dictate their education in the future and have the utmost ability to shape their identity. Whether the solution is to focus on more collaboration, encouraging passion, or diversity of thought, the children of today are the future of tomorrow, and we must guide them in the right direction. I may be only in high school, but I've understood the impact education has had on me and my peers and the change that is demanded for the future. Walt Disney once said, and I quote, the greatest natural resource we have is the minds of our children. And if we can find ways to collaborate, innovate, and cherish the passions of students throughout the classroom, then maybe learning will fulfill its purpose in school. Thank you very much.